Welcome back you guys and in today's News Daily video, I'll be speaking about the latest surrounding Roman Abramovich investing a quarter of a billion back into the club. I'll be speaking about the secret 50 million Premier League centre back that Sky Sports are hinting at. And to end things, I'll be speaking about Marcus Alonso and his potential destination to Inter Milan. But you guys, before I get into anything, if you like today's video, smash that like button, help me get over 2,000 likes for today's video. And boys, on that note, we get straight in with the first story for today. And I'm going to talk about the layers surrounding Roman and why he invested a quarter of a billion into the club. Now to do this you guys, I will be using the article from The Athletic which went in great detail really discussing why Roman's done this and what it means for the future of the club. But anyway you guys, Roman did invest 247 million from his own personal fortune and he got this from his holdings company Fordstrom Limited. Now of course in one sense as the article does state too, this is an encouraging sign. You know, a lot of investors are potentially interested in signing the club from Roman. Roman has put a very high valuation on the club right now at about three billion pounds, which is very unrealistic. And that's really gonna put off a lot of potential investors. It's a bigger sign of Roman's commitment because currently he does have his visa issues. He can't stay in London right now. He's currently in Israel. So to do things like this, to still care about the club and to invest so much time and efforts like he's done over the years since he first signed the club is a massive testament to Roman and his love for the club. However, you guys, as the article goes on, it does give us an uneasy indication about our financial fair play plan because it seems like we really do need European football and the sales of players to consistently meet that regulation. The article goes on to state that we recorded a pre-tax loss of 101.8 million and that's the largest recorded since Roman took over the club in 2005 and that was because he invested so much money in transfers when Mourinho first signs. And as the article states, if it wasn't for the sale of Courtois and guys like Eden Hazard, well, that pre-tax loss would be even bigger. The article does continue and it gives us an indication in regards to how much money we did make from winning the Europa League last season. Now, from actually winning the tournament, it meant that with overall broadcast revenue, it actually fell by about 4 million compared to 2018. But most importantly, match day income also dropped from 74 million to about 66 million, which is quite a decent amount. And it's surprising because there are actually more games played at Stamford Bridge. So what does this tell us about match going fans? What does it tell us about the price of football today? But the reality is, is that we do need consistent Champions League football due to the match day revenue, due to the TV revenue, due to everything that European football brings. And, you know, winning a Europa League doesn't bring anywhere near the same amount of money compared to being knocked out of the round of 16 in the Champions League. That's the levels in regards to monetary success. The article goes on about our financial fair play regulations, stating that we can only record up to 30 million in recorded losses and that's over a three year period. I think we're okay for now, you know, especially with players like Hazard being sold with Koffer coming in as well. And because we had the transfer ban, meaning that we couldn't sign any players and because we're doing so well at getting off, a lot of players are on very high wages off the wage bill. If we can get that Champions League football secured at the end of the season, well, that puts us in a very strong financial standpoint. You know, we can go into the next summer window with money to blow, going for the best possible targets we need, offering them the best competitive wages they need as well. I mean, guys like Giroud, Marcus Alonso, and potentially Ross Barkley leave, well, they're three players earning six-figure salaries. So that's going to take off even more money off the club's wage bill. This article really is long and it goes in some great detail. So I suggest that you guys do read it and find the time to do that. But to end with the first story, I want to focus on the final closing segments of the article. Now, as we all know, we are in our final year with our shirt sponsor. That's currently 40 million a year, but it's already been reported that the club are holding out for better offers from other companies. And this links into why European football is so important for the club. Sponsors are getting much smarter right now, and European football brings in more success and exposure for these sponsors. As the Athletic article states, we'll do a two-year deal, and if you're in the Champions League at the end, we'll extend it by another year. The next sponsor deal we get could potentially be 
the biggest one we've ever got. And at the end of the season, if we've secured European football, this puts the club in a very strong financial standpoint. And it really just makes you think about the business side behind football, because as fans, it's a side that we don't really consider too much. And in that sense, this is why the game really is a job for the players. You know, clubs are companies, they need to make money, they need to sustain their business. And it all comes down to the performances of those 11 players on the field. I'm still gonna remain optimistic, you guys. I feel like this season is still gonna be positive in its own point of view. And I feel like we are gonna get Champions League football. So let's be optimistic and let's keep those spirits high. But you guys, on that point, we move on to the second story for today. And that's in regards to a secret 50 million Premier League defender reported by Sky Sports. Now, last night, Sky Sports had released a very cryptic piece of news suggesting that we are currently talking to a rival Premier League club in regards to a 50 million rated Premier League centre-back. Now, of course, this was made especially vague as hell. When it comes to Premier League rival, well, what does that actually mean? Does that mean a potential top four rival? Or does that mean a general term for other Premier League teams? And the price at 50 million, well, that price valuation is so vague that it fits in quite a lot of players into that range. But you guys, just so I can tell you from experience, a lot of times when sources give you information, you need to be discreet. You can't always just release it because you need to protect the anonymity. So that means that you might have to leave certain details in the news a bit vague. You might have to change a few stats and figures to make things vague as well. But anyway, you guys, Let's talk about who these potential candidates could be. There's only three defenders I can think of and we'll start with the first guy. We start with Joe Gomez, the centre-back at Liverpool and for me this is like completely far-fetched but could there be something happening behind the scenes? The only way this could become a reality or a possibility was if there was something happening between Gomez and Liverpool behind the scenes. Maybe he has a secret clause in his contract. Maybe there's some unrest between both parties. But it just makes no sense from the player's point of view why he'd want to leave. He's in an amazing position right now, playing alongside Van Dijk. And, and when it comes to centre-back competition at Liverpool, you know, Lovren and Matip, they're decent, okay players, but they're not a strong enough competition to really displace Gomez from the team. If Gomez was to sign for us, he's competing against a lot of young guys around his age and it feels like it's taking a and it feels like it's taking an unnecessary risk for no reason. The second option is Issa Jot from West Ham. Now the reason why I feel like quite a lot of people are inclined to think that this could be a possibility is because of the valuation that was placed on the player when Man United were interested in the defender. Now his price is going at around 50 million and you know when you put two and two together, well I guess it makes sense. But if you're asking me, he's a decent young player, but compared to Tomori, Zuma, Christensen and Rudiger, he isn't on their level. So that would make no sense. So for me, the most obvious, obvious, obvious defender it has to be is none other than Nathan Aki. Now, with Marcus Alonso being very close to leaving, and I'll be speaking about him later on in the video, it seems like Nathan Aki has the path of replacement to come into the club right now, especially because he can fill two positions. I've said this time and time again, he can play as a left back, left wing back in midfield and in defence. And when you consider that the club's main issue right now is that they want to sign players in this period that are going to have a long term impact in the team. While a signing like Nathan Aki makes even more sense due to his versatility to fill different positions. Now the reporter David Ornstein did release a podcast on The Athletic talking about the deal and he actually gave some pretty interesting news surrounding Aki. He said that Bournemouth are now more relaxed when it comes to potentially letting Aki leave in this window. It makes a ton of sense. Aki has all the interest from all the big clubs in this country. We have that buyback fee of 40 million, meaning that we're getting the hottest centre back in the Premier League right now for a much better fee. As I said before, it seems like the fee was gassed up a bit because, you know, the Sky reporter doesn't want to bait out his source. But I think that we all kind of felt that Nathan Aki was going to be a signing coming here anyway. So I can't really pretend to be too excited by what's going to be the inevitable. And on that point, we end with the final story for today, and that's in regards to Marcus Alonso. Now, this story's been brought to you guys by Matt Law, and he's reporting that it looks like Marcus Alonso could be close to signing for Inter Milan. And that's because the club are now willing to let Alonso leave in the January window, and it's looking like Marcus Alonso is interested to work under Antonio Conte again. And that makes a lot of sense, you know, 
Conte was the manager that really gave a name to Marcus Alonso. And with Marcus Alonso being allowed to leave, well, this means that he could be replaced by Nathan Aki. Alonso is 29 years old. He's on a big contract worth over six figures a week. This means that we can command a strong fee for the player. And with how we do our business, you guys, any money that we generate from player sales will go straight back into signing Nathan Aki. So in that sense, you know, it does work out really well. And our net costs aren't too high. I was thinking that, could it be a possibility to allow Marcus Alonso to stay due to needing some competition at left back and left wing back? But, you know, I think the reality is you'll never get Marcus Alonso sold for a fee like this. It's a small window. I say we take that, get as much money for the player and reinvest that. It's the best thing to do. And boys, on that note, I'm going to end things now. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'm Mimi FC. This is Blue Lions CV. See you guys in a bit.